Hey, you're at Steve Tech. I'm Steve, of course. And today I wanted to talk to you about valve to piston clearance and how to accurately measure it, where the spot is that you actually measure it at, and why uh, the minimum clearances are what they are. And what is a normal minimal clearance? So as first off, this, we'll start here like on this SMX motor. Um, and I'll give you some illustrations of uh, what we're talking about. So this this particular piston is like 50 in the hole, etc. But um, for this combination, and as you can see here, where the valve pocket is at, oops, where the valve pocket's at, and then how deep that valve pocket is. Now, let's go over here and look at this piston and valve, and I'll show you exactly what's going on when you're doing this. Okay, so here's our piston and rod setup. Here's our valve. There is our valve piston interference fit there okay anything that is around this area here is actually the radial clearance so we'd like to have in general I like to have about 50 thousandths of radial clearance so that's how far in between the valve and the pocket this side not here but actually radial on the side of it okay so this 50 thousandths that's a good general number all the way around now, we'll cover the intake here first because the exhaust is actually a little bit easier. And then we'll actually go back and I'll explain some stuff to you on uh, that 50 thousandths in a hole because it actually matters. All right? So, number one thing is that most people want to put way too much intake to piston clearance. I'm sorry, intake valve to piston clearance in here. So, let me show you what's actually going on. The reason why we can get away with tighter clearance on this end is because the valve is actually opening up as the piston's going down. Okay? So a piston comes up top dead center, the valve just starts to open, and then the valve actually chases the piston down as it's as it's moving. Okay? So that's why we need that little bit of radial wall clearance right through there. We don't make it exactly perfect. We need to open that up a little bit. But what do we want to have for this piston to valve clearance because this pit this valve is actually chasing it down it's not coming up and getting all upset or anything so it's actually chasing it now the other thing to understand too why we don't need to have why in particular on the intake valve why we don't need to have a lot of uh, piston to valve clearance is that when dynamically when the valve shuts is you'll always see the valve actually bounces so it comes up it shuts and it bounces now if for some miraculous reason the piston was coming up at that particular time and mathematically it was possible uh, i mean I, that could be the reason why it would hit but it can't bounce that much okay now that's that's a ill every valve is going to bounce and then really well designed asymmetrical lobes uh, really desi well designed, even if it's on a spintron, not spintron, sometimes just trial tested. Um, you're trying to eliminate that bounce because you, that bounce is also valve seal. If this is closing, it should be closed, piston's coming back up, we want it sealed and tight. If this thing bounces, the more it bounces on the valve seat, the more pressure will go back up through the intake. That's not what we're talking about here, but the piston's way down here, that's just another. Uh, reason of valve control and valve spring control since this valve is opening as the piston is going down and chasing it it's on the opening ramp of the cam lobe which is easily controlled it's the it's the closing ramp that's our problem child that's always the problem child in a camshaft and valve train is the closing not necessarily opening it doesn't lose control at the opening and then at peak lift or any area in there, the piston is way away from the valve. It never has any issue there if it ever lost control. The only possibility of losing uh, control would be on that closing ramp. And since the piston's nowhere near it, there, nowhere near it, at peak lift, that's why we can run something tighter. Now, go back over here and I'll show you something a little interesting on this motor. Now, I just showed you, or would just this thing is 50 thousandths in the hole. Now we talked about uh, piston design and decks 
uh, I can't remember which video it was that we talked about in the perfect world this clearance would be absolute where this piston would just come up and keep carbon clean off of the cylinder head area it would actually touch the cylinder head touch the cylinder head okay that would be absolute perfect oh, I think we talked about it on a quench deal that's what it was if you wanted that would be absolutely perfect if it was touching so back in the day when we did uh, NH, when I did NH Ray Pro Stock stuff I learned this and it was always an interesting thing I'm just giving you round numbers so it's easier to, to do but I do remember the actual valve to piston clearance because we spent a lot of time making this valve to piston clearance perfect I'll tell you why in a second but we always were shooting for 35 thousandths 35 thousandths cold rolling over with lash set it up we would check that that valve to piston clearance and made sure that uh, spinning over by hand that it was 35 thousandths in that particular motor in NHRA Pro Stock at the time different now I have no idea what they're doing but at the time the piston was 50 thousandths in the hole just like what this SMX motor is so the piston was 50 in the hole we had 35 thousandths of clearance but running down track take the engine apart we noticed that the pistons were just touching combustion chamber which is perfect absolutely perfect but that would mean what start thinking about the math here this whole thing grew 50 thousandths the piston moved up 50 thousandths we only had 35 thousandths of clearance here so dynamically the engine actually ran at negative 15 thousandths of clearance negative it was hit, hitting but would never see any indication because everything that's happening here is a latent effect it is slow it's behind things are stretching timing belt stretch timing chain stretch uh, camshafts twist crankshafts twist everything that's going on there is slowing down and has this uh, latent might be a wrong word but latent effect where it's actually behind what it is just in a static rotation just statically sitting here checking parts but dynamically it's lagging it's behind everything's behind it just is what it is now the reason that being is I'll go back over here and show you in the piston so I know for a fact that in every engine that we do that in between 45 and 50 is always a good general number piston being 50, uh, 50 in the hole really doesn't matter what that number is that's just something uh, that's giving you a, as an antidote of what's going on there but valve the piston clearance doesn't matter where the piston is at valve the piston clearance this thing is always going to be good in that 45 to 50 range on the intake side now so we know that the camshaft and all the parts are basically retarding themselves. They're being latent, they're behind, okay? Which also means that the reason why we need more exhaust valve clearance, like to see 80 at minimum, usually like to see 90 to 100 would be fine, is because everything's behind. Well, remember, the exhaust valve gets closer as it is, um, Let's see, as it's as everything slows down and retards the exhaust valve timing retards and gets closer to the piston that's why we need more valve to piston clearance there so the exhaust is pretty easy just like to see 80 uh, 90 you can go a little bit more because typically there's never a problem with the valve pocket design in the exhaust side really rare so more clearance really doesn't matter on here What's the reason why, okay, so we don't want, uh, so screw it. Let's just put a hundred thousandths clearance here on the intake side. Okay, well, do that. You notice that intake valve pocket and how it comes down into that top ring land? The reason why we spent so much time in NHRA Pro Stock and why I spend so much time trying to make things correct is that making power is not the problem I've said that a hundred times I'll say a hundred times more in all these videos making power is not the problem making things live 
is. Okay, so as I add valve, unnecessary valve to piston clearance, where do I need to add it at? Well, I just have to cut this valve pocket deeper. What happens when I cut that valve pocket deeper? It gets closer to this ring land. What happens when that valve pocket gets closer to this ring land? It makes a thin, thinner area right through here that is real prone to breaking and getting picked up in big horsepower applications. Okay, that is the reason why we want to run as little valve to piston clearance on the intake as we can safely run not adding a bunch of clearance into the piston because we make the piston weak that is the problem with adding lots of valve to piston clearance so it, you don't need any more than 50 for sure and you can run less than that i know you can but just giving you a nice safe easy number 45 to 50 i know that works all the time we do it all the time on every engine Sometimes they'll have more, sometimes the uh, different combustion chambers, different head designs will allow to have a shallower pocket. And that's fine, that's all cool. You can run more valve piston clearance there, but in these kind of applications, like even on my SMX or anything that has a canned valve, anything that actually has a wedge valve, uh, outside of some of the Hemi stuff, just because they have a different pin height, um, we need to add, drop that ring land down. I mean, there's, there's lots of math going on in here of what we're allowed to do and what we can do to make things live and be strong. But remember, this is my whole point. Too much valve to piston clearance unnecessarily makes piston weak. Weaker. Not weak per se, but it does make it weaker. So, what we like to see in these is we like to see 45 to 50 on the intake. Nice, easy, safe number. Remember, everything is retarding itself. That's why it actually adds more to it like to see 80 to 90 and can be more because it's really not a big deal on the exhaust it's not making the piston weaker by having a deeper pocket 90 percent of the time especially in anything like these um chevrolets and some ls's will be into the pocket big block chevrolets smx's the valve seat is pretty high up in the combustion chamber big chamber and uh the exhaust valve usually never you can see there's no pocket in here at all because it doesn't even need one so uh but lots of clearance there that's fine you're not making a weak piston but that piston can get weak if you have too much clearance on your intake. So, that's a good rundown on valve to piston clearance, what numbers you'd like to see, why you want to see it, and how the dynamics are all working. So anyways, I'm Steve Morris, Steve Tech. Have a great day.